Hey friends, this is Bernard from Jurassic Time, bringing you a quick Jurassic production bite. For a film nearly 30 years old, I'm surprised by the things I learn about it every day. Jurassic Time sat down recently with creature creator and puppeteer for the Dilophosaurus in the original Jurassic Park, and we learned how this unfortunate goof hid something from fans for nearly 30 years. Now we all know how pervasive the image of the Dilophosaurus with the frill has become. It's in video games, toys, artwork, it's everywhere. Much to the dismay of scientists everywhere. But how did this all happen? Jurassic Time's owner spoke with one of the early artists behind Jurassic Park, John Gertie, and he explains here. I was accidentally responsible for the least scientific anatomical <laughs> detail of the dinosaurs. And here's the way it happened. Rick Carter called me. Let's say some people are backed into a corner by one of these carnivorous dinosaurs. And then the paleontologist, Grant, by virtue of something he knows as a paleontologist that the others don't get, he somehow gets them out of that situation. And so I said, okay, what if there are predatory dinosaurs, maybe dinosaurs, that have some inflatable structure? Let's say this inflatable something or other is red and black striped. Grant sees a red and black striped umbrella in the corner and grabs it, opens it, and it scares the dinosaur off. Rick Carter would eventually adapt this idea in his scripts, but during the evolution of the film, the scene was lost, but the design elements remained. The Dilophosaurus kept its frill. Not just its frill. The Dilophosaurus also kept the inflating venom sacs. The original idea. They are seen very briefly in the film, but this wasn't the intention. I recently sat down and spoke with the Dilophosaurus creature creator and puppeteer Rick Gallinson, and he explains a bit of the original intention. The tongue and the spit from the mouth would have been epic. The tongue was a two-stage tentacle mechanism, and the base was on an up-down pulley too. The mouth would open wide, the venom sacs would sell up into its throat, and the tongue would lift up like a serpent, revealing the split openings. The twin Tigon tubes were inside that special head and neck, so all of this, including the swelling throat, could be done in one insert shot. Even with all of this planned, there was one problem. The creature had been tested in a dry, warm environment, and the soundstage was anything but. This caused the compressed air to cool and make a small puff of smoke. All of it was in the film, with the exception of the tongue and inflatable bladder in the throat. They cut the film around it. It was really great, and I'm so sad it didn't make it into the film. In the end, we still have Nedry being shot with the venom in the eyes, but done off-screen by Rick Gallinson holding a paintball gun. Unfortunately, you can't predict everything, especially when designing something months ahead of time. It would have been great to see this in the final film, but since the gag was blown, it makes sense that they cut around it. But one thing is sure, we want to see more Dilophosaurus, and we know who to ask. Thanks for watching. Check out our site for the full interview with Rick Gallinson and our YouTube for more interviews and content from Jurassic Time.